Welcome to the St. Margaret Mary Catholic Community. We gather today as the body of Christ on the 30th Sunday in ordinary time. In today's gospel, Jesus cures the faithful blind man. Please stand. begin this celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Spirit. In the Gospel today, my dear friends, we hear the story, Jesus healing the blind man. We all have the great sight from God. How well we have been grateful for the sight he has given. And how well we have the insight to understand those people who are, who are physically challenged. For the times we have been unkind or, nay, or, or going out of our way to help those people who are physically challenged, let us ask for forgiveness and pray for strength that will be, we will be filled with the compassion and love for others. Lord Jesus, you heal the blind and the lame. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are near to the broken hearted. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the high priest who pleads for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us to love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, well, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so they shall not stumble. I am the father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Those who saw 
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made the representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked to him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Then they, so they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak and sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus told him, The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go on your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Mostly all of us here have our two eyes, the eyesight, two eyes we, that we can see. Then we have two ears that we can hear. And we have two hands to work. Then we have two legs to walk around. And we are mostly, all the body parts are there. Then how often we reflect it? There are many people in the world 
they do not have that privilege. They do not have the privilege of having two eyes. They don't have the privilege of having two legs. And they don't have the privilege of having, having their, their hands. And many are, many times, have physically challenged. How often we go out of our way to help them? How often we, we try to give our eyes to those people who do not have eyes? How often I gave, I, I gave my hands to those people who don't have a, any hands? How often we walked for the people who don't have legs? How often we have, we have helped those people who are mentally challenged? How often we appreciate our own things and we sometimes take for granted. And Jesus, our master, did not. When Parthamaeus, the blind man, as we heard in the story in the gospel, he was crying, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. But many people around, around him told him to be quiet. He is crying for help. And many people around him told him to be quiet because he's disturbing them. But he's disturbed, he, does, he, did, he, does, he did not have eyesight all of his life. And he wanted to get some eyesight from Jesus. But by, by calling, by he calling for Jesus' help, disturbs other people and they are telling him, be quiet. And but that man did not give up. And he began to cry all the more. Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, yes. Not only told him to be silent, they rebuked him. How often we may be in that group that rebuke those people who are physically challenged rather than, rather than having compassion over them. But Jesus showed the com great compassion to those, that person, Bartimaeus, called him and asked him, consoled him, asked him, what do you want me to do? And he said, very clearly, Master, I want to see. And he told him, go home, and your faith has healed you. Yes, my dear friends, Jesus' compassion, Jesus the Master's compassion reminds us that we have to be compassionate to those people who are physically challenged. Not only do we need to be compassionate, we need to go out of the way to heal their sight. As I mentioned before, how can I give my sight to those people who don't have one? And this, our, our spiritual life is all about relationship, my dear friends. How compassionate we have, how compassionate we are with other people. How compassionate we are to those people who are underprivileged. And that's what all Christian life is all about. That we come together to remind ourselves that we need to be grateful to God what we have. And we also not only grateful to what, what we have, we also need to show that compassion to those people who don't have that privilege. And that's the way we can show to God that we are all grateful for the creation, for, for his creation. Yes, my dear friends. How well we do. There's a little story I want to remind you. There was a person who did not have eyesight. This was a blind person. And the dark night he was walking with the light on his hand. On the way, someone ran into him in the middle of the night and asked him, you know, you are a blind person and you don't have you don't have a difference between day or night. You don't see that. So the day or the sunlight there or darkness, you don't have any difference. Then why do you carry a light in your hand in the dark night? All he said, the blind man said, thank you for asking me the question. I carry, out, I carry around this light so that people like you who has eyesight cannot run over me. 
that blind man had a, not only he had a sight, he didn't have a sight, but he had insight. And that's what Jesus reminds us today, my dear friends, that you and I have the sight, but do I have, do we have the insight to care for others? Amen. The insight of our spiritual life comes to us through the faith we have in God. So let us express that faith. I believe in God. Seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the finest of saints, the resurrection of the body, the everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> in today's gospel, as we heard, the story of Bart Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do? Confident in his care for, let us not hesitate to bring and place before God our needs are. For God's holy church, may all members listen for the voice of the Lord, calling them to fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. For firefighters, police officers, and other first responders, may they carry out their work in safety and be sustained in their life of service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who grieve the loss of a loved one, may they know the compassionate love and comfort of God's embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather here, may we be healed from every spiritual blindness as to focus our gaze on Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, may they find comfort in God's healing power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they be welcomed into the peace of eternal life with Christ, especially Russell and Margaret Steinmart and Melvin and Viola Erickson, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of creation, your, your glory is present in all you have created. Hear our prayers that we might serve you with fidelity and love to our neighbors and ourselves. We ask this through our, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Pray, my friends, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to make your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service, may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for in you, we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of your pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the Lord. Hosanna. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Bernard our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all of us gather here before this altar today. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially those people whom we remember now.
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let us pray with the conference to Heavenly Father in the words of Lord Jesus Christ taught us, our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace and love. Behold Jesus Christ, who gave us the sight we have. And he comes to us today to have the insight to go and help those people who are physically challenged. Happy are called his banquet. Lord. May the body and blood of Christ bring us life everlasting.
Christ. Blessed and then broken, shared by us all, so that we become God's presence to God's people. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I have two announcements. Uh, this coming Friday, November 1st, there is an All Saints Day Mass. It's a holy day of obligation. It will be at 6 p.m. Also, on Thursday, November 7th, is the Healing Mass at 11 a.m., followed by a soup luncheon. Sign-up sheets are in the back of church. All are welcome. Thank you, Jean. So, as it was announced, that coming Friday, we have a holiday of obligation, November 1st. And after tired of being celebrating after the... Uh, Halloween, then you can come and join Mass at 6 p.m. And also, um, the following week at the, uh, November 7th, we have a healing Mass. Those in need of healing, and those people who are sick, even sick of my homilies, they can come and join the Mass. Okay. Um, anybody celebrating? Yes. Anybody celebrating uh, their uh, birthdays coming week? Oh, nobody. Okay. Any anniversaries? Okay. Having none, then let us stand together for a final blessing. <coughs> the Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be to God. Have a nice evening.
Show us the way today. Act justly. Love tenderly.